Oh, how are you feeling today? Oh, pretty good. I, I went out and got a new fan. The energies are doing some interesting shit today. Oh, yeah. Because it's like, um, I focus my intention. Connected on a, on a Skype call with Katarina. No. And, um, she seemed to be in a fairly good mood and everything. She said she couldn't talk, but I tested a theory. I just said, you know, there's, you know, because I, I, I just, I casually mentioned about how much expanding I've been doing and how much clarity, and she's just agreeing, like, oh, yeah, you know, she's just relating there. And I said, there's, there's uh, a different, uh, <clears throat> a tactic that, uh, that I've, I've learned to kind of assist me with, um, shifting, like, stubborn belief systems from what I, don't prefer into what I do prefer, the ones that are really stubborn and, you know, can't seem to let go of. And I've, I've, used, I've also been using this in regards to you, although not just in regards to you, in regards to everyone, but um, also in regards to you. And instead of saying, well, you can tell me about that later, I'm busy right now, because she said she was kind of busy and couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, really, what's that? <laughs> and so I got halfway through the explanation. And... Her Skype just dropped. <laughs> I don't know if that's something that she's doing on purpose, or if it's just a synchronistic malfunction of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it could be either or knowing her. I honestly have absolutely <clears throat> no way of knowing which. Um, it could it could simply be synchronistic malfunction to where Skype on her end is just choosing to be a bit of a bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, as it tends to be, from time to time. Yeah, but she has, she has a tendency, when you drop in frequency, to tell it to kinetically do things to her equipment. Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, we all have that tendency. Well, well she, she, she has a good dose of it. I mean, <laughs> I remember when she was out in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, she actually did the, she actually did the reverse. She, she took yeah. a, a dead laptop battery and extended it for 20 minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. It, <laughs> but when, when, when she drops her frequency, though, it, it also affects, affects the call. <laughs> and her equipment is very touchy with her. <clears throat> yeah, apparently, apparently. Oh, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you know, I, I see it around, you know, the house here when it comes to computer equipment, too. When, um, well, you know, pretty much everybody in this house has a computer, and um, how their computer performs uh, usually tends to be directly based on the mood they're in. <laughs> so, when they're, and I don't mean mood as just simply a good mood or bad mood, but mood as pertains to belief systems. Mm -hmm. When they have a belief system that, oh, yeah, my day is going great, and, you know, and things are going great, and everything is going great, then their computers tend to go great too. Yeah. But even but if they're in a belief system of you know when it rains it pours if I didn't have any bad luck I wouldn't have any luck at all whatever then if they're in a good mood during those times then they're usually only in that good mood trying desperately to boost their quote unquote luck level and the more they resist that quote unquote bad luck the more it seems to persist. <clears throat> so even if they're in a completely good mood during a barrage of computer errors which um. You know, we're running Linux over here, so yeah. it's a lot more difficult to get those errors under under Linux, and it's it's incredibly easy to get those errors un, under Windows, obviously. So, state of being can, can screw with Windows a lot more than Linux, but when it's screwing with Linux a lot, it just makes a profound statement as to just just what sort of state of being they're in that they're so insistent on you know shit and fan making their rendezvous. And uh, I mean, I've noticed that equally with with myself. Um, the more my belief systems are in alignment with things working out, everything works flawlessly, and <clears throat> when I'm just having a day where I feel completely defeated, I will get all of these just computer errors that just should not be happening. And, but yet, there they are anyway, and I'm like, Egh. <laughs> I have to kind of remind myself to do what's happening and do my best to shift. As a matter of fact, I'm about main reasons I got on this call is I couldn't finish um Skype conversation, but I felt that it might be um, interesting to make it a little bit of a YouTube topic. Mm. 
And I know you've got the voice recorder going. Yeah. So, you know, um, like, a tendency that Katarina has, and a tendency that, that we all have, mm-hmm. time to time, to be quite honest, mm-hmm. is we go into what I refer to as an abundant shock, because we're so used to things going shitty, mm-hmm. that when things start to go really good, like, the distance between the contrast of one and the other <clears throat> is so crazy. Yeah, you, you have a tendency to look over your shoulder to see if something's <laughs> ready to hit you. <clears throat> yeah, because we're we're addicted to our comfort zone, right? I mean, no amount of contrast would be any big deal if we weren't addicted to our comfort zones, but we are. <laughs> and so when we're used to a lower one... Oh, I'm getting a knock at the door. Yeah! Uh, I'm on a Skype call that's being recorded for a paradigm shift and educational comedy episode. What? About what? And I'll talk to him later. I'm busy right now. <laughs> See, there, there's my my physical reality. I'm um, giving some real time uh, illustration there. Mm-hmm. You know, having this intention to where I just want to have this conversation for the paradigm shift episode, and I want it to flow smoothly. Mm-hmm. But I still have a little bit of residual belief system to where. Whenever I'm in the middle of something important, I absolutely have to be interrupted. Uh And I have all the permission slips in the world. I see that when I'm busy doing absolutely nothing, (laughs) if you get my meaning, Mm -hmm. so totally free, everything's clear, you know, I've got time to be interrupted. You can hear the crickets chirp, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I get into something, you know, and I mean, on some days, I swear to God, on some days it's two to three different people knocking at my door, plus four Facebook texts, plus people texting on Skype, plus people trying to call me on Skype, plus my phone is ringing, plus, 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 plus. And it just all seems to shit pile down. And I've noticed that in those moments, that's a choice for me. Mm -hmm. To where we can just kind of slow with it and make calm decisions about it in our joy. And when we do that, we start to notice that the chaos quickly begins to subside. But when we decide to be frustrated as fuck and go, oh my god, all this at once, ah, fuck, 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 <clears throat> then it just piles on more and more and more, and it intensifies. And, you know, so I'm sure this call will be a demonstration here that if, if I'm able to maintain my state of being, that things get more quiet instead of intensifying. <clears throat> so anyway, we're addicted to our comfort zones, so our comfort zones are the lower vibratory shit, the belief systems that are like, you know, um, everything always goes wrong, and nothing good ever happens to me, or, you know, all, all the shit that school has indoctrinated us with, and society's indoctrinated us with, and so, you know, we're shifting out of it, and <clears throat> what I was telling Katerina <laughs> is that what I've, I've discovered that when I have a belief system that it is not preferred. And I know that this belief system keeps pulling me in directions to where my choices and actions within that are then subsequently having consequences that, you know, I'm just not cool with. <laughs> um, that when we have one of those belief systems, and normally we'd be so tempted to go into self victimization like, oh my god, I can't seem to get rid of this belief system. It's not what I prefer. I know it's holding me back. I know this belief system is nothing more than an excuse I'm using to limit myself so that I could remain sitting in the pile of shit that I'm used to sitting with that's been my comfort zone. I don't know any other way other than this misery about this. And, you know, that whole feeling that that letting go to something new and better it's just like, you know, like, insulting your intelligence. Like, no, I can't let go of that. That, that, that sounds too good to be true. I'm setting myself up to be hurt. That sounds too airy-fairy. And if this is an episode of Peter Pan or Leave the Beaver, what the fuck, you know? And, I mean, obviously there's a difference between open-mindedly letting go and, and just deciding to take a chill pill and just observing what happens around you as a result of just deciding to chill the fuck out. There's a difference between that and, you know, wishing on fictional stars that aren't going to happen and, you know, setting yourself up for disappointment. I mean, there's a difference between the two. But sometimes ego does not like to feel, you know, to feel that differentiation. 
what it feels like is feeling justified. And it, it feels justified through that self victimization So I can go, yeah, yeah, see, I knew it, I knew it. No, nothing good ever happens. So then, you know, we're feeling like justified. Like, yeah, see, see, I told you, I told you. And so, this tactic that I, I was explaining to Katarina, because we started off the conversation, like, you know, I was just like, man, you know, I've been doing so much, you know, expanding lately, and there's been so much clarity, and it's been crazy. And she's just been like, yeah, me too, you know. But, you know, she said she really couldn't couldn't talk at the moment. And um, so I, I was curious, and, you know, so I, I decided to just pitch it out there, like, oh, well, you know, there, there's this uh, thing I've been, I've been using to help me expand. Oh, now my dad's calling on the other line. <laughs> Still an opportunity, not a burden. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> hey, Dad. Um, all right, no problem. I know, I'm, 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 I'm in the middle of something right now. Yeah, okay, not a problem. Okay. All right. Alrighty. I don't know how much of that the speakerphone picked, picked up on, but long story short, um, my dad needs some help with something, shall we say, more electronic. And, um, you know, you, instead of being like, oh no, it's gotta be done now, it's gotta be done now, it's gotta be done now, he's telling me, you know, that sometime around 6 o'clock it'd be okay, and it's 4.30 now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, I'm not going to be on this little paradigm shift episode here for, you know, one and a half to two hours or whatever. <laughs> At least I hope not. And so, you know, that was some nice even flow there. Well, it depends on how many uh, uh, interruptions your ego can give you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's just like, um, you know, instead of, you know, dad being all like, oh, no, now, now, you know, he was just like, oh, well, I need your help with this, but, you know, it's it's okay that, you know, we could, we can do it a little later. Let's get to it soon, but, you know, we can do this a little later. So, that, that was just yet another example of just kind of like, you know, allowing your belief systems to be where they are, but without insisting that, you know, when it rains, it pours, and it's got to be worst case in everything. <clears throat> so, anyway, getting back to my story here. So... You know, me and Katarina were both affirming to each other that, you know, we've been going through a lot of expansion and clarity and some amazing things have been happening. <coughs> and, um, she was saying, yeah, me too, it's cool, it's cool, you know. But she was still saying that she couldn't talk. And so I got curious as to see how true that was. Because when Katarina can't talk, there's nothing anybody can say to change her mind. It's like, gotta go, bye, you know, and... Well, whether, whether she can't talk because she, she would rather sit there and, and mope and wallow in her shit, or whether she can't talk because, you know, she's really just busy with something, and, you know, she would need two or three of herself to tune more than that, so, you know, it's just like, hey, you know, I'm busy with this, I'll get back to you later. Um, regardless of which one it is, she, she cannot and does not stick around unless she has time to do it. So, of course, you know, if she sticks around it, it, it within that particular point, Usually it's a ducking mechanism with plausible deniability. So I, I decided to get a little curious. I, I think this is like a little game her and I play with each other. I, I decided to get a little curious. And I just briefly mentioned just this thing I figured out how to use. I didn't like pressure it. I wasn't like, come on, let me tell you. I left it completely open-ended to give her a choice. She could have responded with, well, Dave, I'd love to hear about that. Please tell me later. I'm going to let you go now. Okay. To which I'd have been like, all right, cool, I understand you're busy. Um, you know, I can always talk to you about this later. And that would have been the end of the conversation. But because she really does actually have a lot more time than she was letting on, her curiosity kicked in as a reflex. Because obviously, same as me, same as a lot of people, we you know, working on improving our state of being, so... The more tools that we can, you know, we can use to our advantage on that to make things less torturous, the better. So, when there's a new new tool that pops up, it's like, woo, I want to know about it. I want to see if this is something I can use. <clears throat> you know, just kind of like new YouTube documentary videos. I mean, it's the same idea when you've been wanting to learn more about a subject, and all of a sudden, you know, you see a new Bashar video, or Abram Hicks video, or a new video, Katarino, or myself, or, or you know... 
a Lea Turunen or Tobias Lars or a new quantum physics documentary or, you know, the, the, the next 10 zillion Zeitgeist movie or, you know, whatever. <clears throat> um, whatever it happens to be. Of course, you're going to be like, ooh, I'm really curious to know what that's about because that, there might be something that, uh, that I could use there that might be beneficial to me. Because even though we, we do default to our comfort zones of being crap, you know, we still have that curiosity drive as humans. And we still don't like like it with shit and rendezvous. It's not like we're sitting there like, oh, I just enjoy shit and rendezvous so much. Ooh, I just can't wait till it happens again. Oh, give me more. No, we're not, we're not like that. <clears throat> so, of course, when, when we stumble upon a new tool, curiosity kicks in. It's like, ooh. But sometimes we get halfway through and the new tool scares the fuck out of us. <laughs> and so her curiosity kicked in. And she asked me to tell her. Now, as tempting as it was to tease her and go, oh, really? I thought you were busy, huh? As tempting as it was to do that, that was a temptation of ego, and I decided to not go there this time. I've gone there plenty of other times before. I was opting out on this. <laughs> so, here's here's what the tool is that I got halfway through the ex- explanation of it. And then when things, shall we say, got to be too high in frequency or too empowering or however you want to put it, you know, technological alignment started uh, kicking in, and, you know, the Skype call just ended abruptly. And her cell phone is completely down. And, you know, all of a sudden, not on Facebook at all. I mean, I know that Oregon's also been going uh, through some power grid issues, too. So there might have been some alignment with timing on that. Because I know they've been in a bit of a... Um, a sticky situation. Power going on, power going off, power going on. And, you know, internet access, too. When, when the local um, access points for the whatever ISPs are in that area, you know, when when, when they have a power shutdown, I'm, I'm sure at least part of their network shuts down, regardless of backups, because I'm sure that, um, you know, whatever is there to boost the signal on the telephone poles, because signal can only travel something like through a wire, like through, um, 3,000 feet, or something like that, before it needs a multiplexer or something to, like, kick the signal back up again. And, you know, that sort of stuff relies on power. That it doesn't operate just on good intentions and, you know, the glory of the Holy Spirit or whatever. You know, that that needs power, power lines that are coming through there. If there's no power, it's hostile to bye-bye to the signal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so anyway, I was explaining to her that what I figured out and I've been working with, not only in dealing with her, but every you know, aspect of my life, regardless of who or what, something I've been playing with. Because she, she just posted a video not too long ago in regards to dealing with one sense of not okayness and being okay with your not okayness so that you're not resisting it, so that you're owning, you know, that emotion, that state, so then you can shift it into something you'd prefer instead of this negative feedback loop cycling into the cesspool of this shit. And I told her, well, <clears throat> when I'm encountering a belief system that I just can't seem to freaking shake that is just there and that it's the most believable for me in the moment for it to stay there. You know, one of those, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all types of categories of belief systems. And it's just there driving me fucking crazy. Now, sometimes in the past, I would have been like, oh my God, this is here and I can't seem to shift it. Fuck, 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 I know this belief system is crap, and it's an excuse, and it's affecting my actions, but <clears throat> there it is anyway, and I can't seem to shake it. Ah! Well, inspired by Katarina's video, of course, that whole being okay with your not okay to say, it's a lot easier to put yourself into a position of being okay that you have a, with the fact that you have a shitty belief system than it is to try to totally, you know, shift it all the way to its opposite right away. It's easier to just kind of let go and be like, fuck, okay, fine, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is in this moment. It's, you know, kind of like if, if you've got a bucket of shit in front of you. If you cry about it all you want, but it's, it takes a lot less effort and energy to just look at it and go, all right, fine. I've got this bucket of crap. That's the reality of it. It's here. It's in the bucket. It's in front of me. Okay, I, I have it. And then you can kind of calm the fuck down instead of going into the self victimization mode. Then once you're at that calm down point, this, all right, I've got this in front of me, so what the fuck do I want to do with it? I've learned that focusing on 
Well, and this is provided that one's ego has moved enough beyond the point of that need to be right at all costs, even to one's own destruction, and that addiction to being right. I've moved past that a long time ago because I've learned there's a great many things that it really sucks to be right about. <laughs> so as long as you can get there, then you can say to yourself, okay, cool, I have this belief system, but you know what I'm really looking forward to? It's really going to be awesome and fun and exciting and wonderful to be proven wrong about this belief system. Because I know this belief system is crap. I know this belief system is bullshit. I know this belief system is just a lame-ass excuse. So I'm looking forward to being proven wrong on it. And I know that I can't micromanage my reality. I can't know everything about everything that's coming. So that's cool. That's good. I'm probably going to get proven wrong in, in a way that's totally going to defy my imagination. Something I can't think of and conceive of and fucking logic to death before the fact. And something that hindsight is going to look back on and go, wow, yeah, that was pretty fucking cool right there, yeah. Because, you know, that sort of shit happens to everybody all the time, really. You're not expecting something, and then it happens, and then you look back on hindsight, and hindsight's like, yeah, that was, that was pretty fucking cool. That was neat, you know. So you just kind of psych yourself up for it to be like one of those types of moments. Like, yeah, cool. I don't know exactly how, I don't know exactly when, I don't know anything about it, but, you know, I'm really looking forward to being proven wrong on it. Because I know when the universe proves me wrong, it has a sense of humorous irony about it. And my god, do I just love irony. That, that is ever some funny shit. So, <laughs> just kind of going, you know, going in that direction. And I was then elaborating on it with Katarina. And saying that, like, you know, I've noticed that, you know, she's been doing a lot of expanding. She's been learning a lot of really cool stuff. She's been sharing out a lot of that wisdom. I've been really, really happy for her. But one thing that tends to happen, and Katarina and I have very clear communication with each other, just so you know, <laughs> very clear. And so we pretty much admit everything, you know, going on, you know, in, in each other's minds, put it out on the table so we can just deal with it. <clears throat> and she admits that <laughs> when she's in, in kind of like an... A, Er, sort of mood about something. She's, she's stubbornly wanting to stick to a belief system she doesn't prefer and doesn't want to stay in. <clears throat> but she still, you know, wants to stick to that comfort zone. She'll push me away. Because she has said that I, of all the people she knows, I am able to very quickly and easily shift her out of her shit into, into where she prefers to be. To shift her out. So, because I can do that with her so easily and effortlessly, because her and I have that close of a friendship that allows me to do that, um, that makes me, like, enemy number one when she wants to feel justified in sitting in a shit. Now, at the same time, she's, she's at a point of awareness where she knows that feeling justified in sitting in her shit is, you know, she doesn't like that. She starts feeling even more victimized about that simultaneously. It, like, like, thinking, like, why am I feeling victimized? I know this is an illusion. What the fuck, right? So then, a lot of times, she'll put out a bit of a, a, a coverall. A positive coverall, to where she's manifesting all these positive synchronicities in order to kind of ignore the shit so she can tell herself, okay, I'm not really doing that. So I'm just so busy with all this positive stuff, I just don't have time to talk to Dave right now. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and yeah, Steve so speak of the devil here. She, um... Just like the post, I got, like, Facebook up in front of me here, so... Anyway, not going to make any assumptions as to whether it was technological or what happened, but anyway, this gets, it gets really interesting. So, you know, she'll she'll have this, this positive cover over, right? But because it's not so much about what you're doing, it's about the energy you're carrying with it. You know, when you, when you try to logic things and do things with this 3D logic, no matter how positive everything seems to be, you get into a situation that Katarina has described as, no matter how much I do, no matter how much positive stuff there is, no matter how much I seem to accomplish, it seems like I've accomplished nothing. Like I've done nothing. Like I'm just on this treadmill. Like, like this, this, no matter how much of anything I do, no matter how much progress I make, I'm still standing still. So then she, she starts feeling more and more like crap about this, yeah, like this frustration of like being on, on this treadmill. Um, Bashar refers to that as expecting the mirror to smile first. Okay, mirror reflection. I'll smile, but only if you smile first. And, um, 
David Icke refers to that as combing the mirror. You know, you're trying to comb your hair, but instead of combing your hair, you're combing the mirror and getting all pissed off as to why your actual hair isn't, you know, doing anything. So, you know, it builds into that sort of a situation. And, you know, I've also been coming into, for lack of better words, a lot of my energetic senses. I know some people are going to look at that and be like, okay, boo-boo. Well, one thing I can tell you about my energetic senses, for those of you looking at this going, wow, what's Dave been smoking? Must be some really good shit. Um, is simply that the information that I receive from my energetic senses in, in regards to my physical reality ends up having actual measurable effect in my physical reality, bombarded by me- amazing measurable effect, lots of measurable effect, synchronicities and so on. And, you know, this is physical reality. This is, you know, knock on wood, five senses. I'm seeing it happen. I'm connecting the dots. And it's there. And even the logical mind can't deny that it's there and it's what it is. So if anybody wants to think this is kooky or airy-fairy or whatever, that's cool. I respect their right to do that. But, you know, I want to present this to them. Anybody who's thinking, that, oh yeah, well, well, Dave's just smoking something, or he's full of it, or whatever, so on and so forth. And if anyone's tempted to try to, like, you know, respond to this video and tell me, oh, you need to get with reality, and da 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 well, wait a minute, what you're actually telling me to do, you're telling me to do the opposite of getting with reality. What you're actually telling me to do is completely ignore my life experience as if it never happened, and believe text on a fucking screen written by somebody, I don't know who the hell you are, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm supposed to believe text on a computer screen, you know, rather than my physical life experience. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not in the mood to buy the Brooklyn fucking bridge today, okay? I'm just, you know, I'm not in the market for that sort of purchase, so thank you, no thank you. (laughs) So, moving on. Um, So I was telling Katerina that I also noticed that the more I've been utilizing the before-mentioned tool, that we're getting back on track now, that, like, when she... When she pushes away, it's not like that hammer drop, fuck you, take the fuck you, stick it up my ass, break it off, sew it shut, and super glue it in there. It's not that dramatic, chaotic, full-blown push away. It's more subtle. It's it's a lot nicer. It's not a complete push away. It's got the plausibility of all sorts of positive synchronicities around her. So I guess that's a, a lot better than all fucking hell-breaking loose. You know, definitely, you know stepping up the vibratory ladder, so to speak, making progress, things are, you know, becoming less and less drastic as we let go of our belief systems to that drastic, all hell-breaking loose requirement that we tend to provide ourselves. Like, oh, well, nothing's changing unless I can see hell and chaos. No, no, no. So the more we let go of that addiction to drama, the more we can stop being drama whores. Um, when these sorts of echoes reoccur in our reality, they're a lot softer. It's not this big nuclear bomb explosion of shit. It's it's more subtle, and it's easier to deal with. So when she pushes away, it's in a lot more pleasant and playful way. And she's surrounded by positive synchronicities. There's a few negatives sometimes in there, but she's surrounded by positive synchronicities. Then, of course, she can then use as a permission slip to avoid facing some other things, and then, you know, that, that implodes on her later. She's kind of been through that one again and again and again. But I'm also noticing that every time that implosion happens, even that's a softer implosion, you know what I mean? She's not as hard on herself the next time as she was the last time. So she's making a lot of progress even with that. Yes. The, the intensity of them beating themselves up uh, grows less and less. With yeah. The niche thing. yeah, yeah, exactly. So I can really measure the difference between, you know... Now, you know, Friday, July 5th, 2013, this point in time, the difference between, if she were to implode right now, the difference between that and, say, a year ago, if she were to implode a year ago, it's like night and day, uh, you know, now is like a hammer to the head. A year, ago, a year ago was like a nuclear bomb taking out the greater Chicago. Well, when she was in uh, Hawaii there, and stung by a bee three times. Yeah. Three times, among other things, that was just, you know, one of many things that happened, but, you know, whenever she would implode on herself, there would be things that would happen to cause her physical harm, like three of these things in a row. That's definitely an interesting one that we tend to refer back to, isn't it? Even she refers back to it. 
So anyway, me, just noticing that these things are getting easier is in and of itself part of that, um, I was talking about that, that being proven wrong in a nice way. Because when you use hindsight to look back at the nuclear explosion that used to be, and then look forward and see that it's a hammer hit instead of a nuclear bomb drop, you can see the amazing process that's been made. So you can then be thankful for that progress. Instead of feeling so victimized, like, oh, woe is me, this always happens. You know, you can um, be like, oh, wow, look at all that progress. That, that is awesome. I can really see uh, the progress that's been made from that point to that point. It's a profound, amazing, significant level of progress. So, you know, the, it's like the more, the more Katarina's been moving into her abundance, moving in her joy, manifesting all these positive, knock on wood, five sense reality, logical mind can't deny it's happening, sort of synchronicities and things keep going better and better and better. I mean, I can, you know, as corny as this may sound, I mean, I can detect energetically, you know, as to, like, what's going on with that. As the positive rises, it's like, she she still oftentimes is like, um, th there was an analogy that, that I heard on a documentary not too long ago that, like, works good for this. Imagine you're in an airport and you've got this heavy baggage, this luggage, lead weight luggage, and you're holding onto it. Now, imagine very slowly the airport starts flooding and the water's rising, rising, rising. So the paradigm shift is rising. The energies are rising. Everything shifting, everything's changing. The water's rising. Now, once that water starts getting up over your head, if you continue to hold on to the lead luggage of your old belief systems and insisting that everything now must be as it's always been, you're going to drown. You have to let go in order to, to rise with the water. And, it's, and, you know, if you can't swim, just imagine you've got, like, a life preserver on you in advance of anything, okay? <laughs> a life vest. But if you're holding on to that luggage, that life vest is pretty well around it. So I've noticed that oftentimes when Katerina gets more and more into all this really positive good stuff and she sees that all this abundance is happening, she will ignore the fact that she is still holding on to that luggage until she starts choking on water. Then she will immediately let go of the luggage. She will do a sudden rise to the top. She'll reach the surface of the water, be coughing and spitting out water and coughing and going, fuck, this is horrible. So now she's having a, a bad reaction to her abundance, and she sees that she's having this bad reaction. So she'll sit and she'll stew, or she'll try to cover up the negativity with a layer of positivity, so on and so forth. And, I mean, I'm not scrutinizing her. her. I mean, her and I talk about this stuff all the time. I'm pretty open about it. She talks about this sort of stuff in, in her, you know, YouTube videos and so on and so forth. So, you know, none of us are gurus sitting on a fucking cloud higher than anybody. None of us are, like, looking down on anybody. Like, oh, we're so great. You you all get the fucking program or whatever. No, no, no. Um, so anyway, it's like, I'm, you know, I'm kind of detecting right now the feeling in the energy, because a lot of really good things have been happening. But she's also got a lot of negative permission slips, too. Like one of her recent videos about how she has tonsillitis. She's been diagnosed with tonsillitis, so she's going to need her tonsils removed, and she goes into detail about that. <clears throat> so, at the same time as she's feeling very victimized about that, she's also simultaneously going through a lot of really, really positive, really, really good things. I mean, I only know about some of them. There's a lot of, I, I don't know that she's going to promise me a rain check on, so I guess she'll get to that when she gets to that. But, you know, I mean, so there's there's one end of the spectrum that this negative duck that she's used to. Oh, God, tonsillitis, i got to get my tonsils removed. So it's that level of negative duck that she's used to that her old comfort zone. Plus, all of the abundance she's been striving for, all these good, the wonderful things in every possible direction that she's been wanting are getting easier and easier to manifest. Simultaneously, easier and easier to manifest things in parallel to her old comfort zone, too. So she can manifest heaven and hell in equal measure, hot and cold. And as it rises, it creates a bigger and bigger storm. Kind of like taking real glass glasses, putting them in the oven, heating them up to 350 degrees, taking them out, and then tossing freezing cold water on them. You're gonna, it, they're going to shatter. So... She's been going through moments where she has paradigm shatters. 
And then she'll sit there, feel sorry for herself. She'll ask why she's feeling sorry for herself. And she goes through this process again and again. As do I also do the same thing from time to time on certain things. It's not in exactly the same way that she does it, but that's okay. That just means her and I are individuals. We're not clone troopers. We express the same core issue in two completely different, unique, and individuated ways. Now, the police state doesn't like individuality, but I happen to be a fan of it. So, you know, that's all good. Let's not be clone troopers. You say tomato, I say tomato, as it were. So, I'm still kind of, you know, feeling that. Because one thing I'm still noticing, and this is one of the reinforcing mechanisms of one of my belief systems that I want to get rid of. The belief system that I have is exactly what I just outlined. I hope I keep seeing Katarina doing this, and even though I'm notating her progress, I don't like that she keeps beating up on herself harshly, and I'd really like her to be out of this, out of this loop finally. But I keep seeing her in this loop, and this is reinforcing the belief system that she must always torture herself. And then there's, like, other, like, reinforcing factors, because, like, society wants us all to think that we have no right to be ourselves, that if, if we're sovereign and joyful and playful and fully aligned with ourselves, being who we are, that we're, be, we're doing something naughty, we're guilty of something, we're being criminals, and that we'd better knock it off, because we have no right to do that, we'd better fall in line... We better get back in the board collective. We better obey authority. We better do as we're told, like goodwill slaves, societal police state slaves. So, you know, that's <laughs> that's what we're taught. And so her and I have gone through many times, I won't get into the full details, where she's kind of in like a meh sort of mood, but she wants to get into this place of sovereign, giving herself full permission to be herself. She finally gets there. She hits that climax. She's really enjoying it. Her mood is great. And it lasts for, like, between five and ten minutes. Something like that. Because it takes her about that amount of time to shift from that alignment into an ever-expanding awareness of, oh, my God, I'm easily and effortlessly doing something that I have a belief system that says I'm naughty for doing. So over that ten-minute period, the guilt and the shame start to build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. And she comes into this awareness of, oh my god, I'm being myself, and I'm enjoying being me. I'm not allowed to do that. God, that might get me the death penalty, or, or 20 to life, or something. Oh, I'm being a horrible person, being myself. I have to drop back into the fucking board collective and be a misery clone trooper. That's, that's the good thing. That's the morally right thing. I have to berate myself and suppress myself. That's what God wants. So says religion. So then, over that period, she keeps getting a little more away from alignment with herself, and more into this guilt and shame, and then she snaps back into her old comfort zone, and up come all the excuses to do it. Because she can't face herself with the fact that she just defeated herself in that way. She can't look at that and go, oh my god, I was in my joy, I felt guilt and shame, and then I snap back. She, that just would be too much on top of everything else. Synchronicities manifest. I mean, it's amazing what will manifest in those moments. I mean, positive or negative or both at the same time. I mean, someone could just suddenly come over and give her a present, or her mom might want to talk to her, or there might be another call that she really needs to take, or there might be a big, huge family argument that starts her. I mean, it could be any number of things, from the most negative to the most positive, everything in between. So start getting bombarded. And now I see that, and I look at the contrast. Whenever she is in the mood to vent to me, like, about how crappy she's feeling about something, and that she wants to feel better, I notice that usually we have all the time in the world. I mean, we've talked for one, two, three, four, five hours on focus of mystery. I mean, that's, that's a very common thing. She's ready to paradigm shift and go from misery to joy, which means mostly focusing on the misery and clearing that out and getting beyond her stubbornness. We'll spend anywhere from one to five hours effortless, effortlessly focused on crap. But when it comes to just letting go and being joyful and being playful and being yourself and knowing that it's okay to be you, it's okay to be happy, it's okay to have fun, and in that having fun, you can even get work done, and you'll get it done more efficiently. You know, going in that mode, it's like, 
whenever I can get her into a full 100% sovereignty mode, I'm lucky if that lasts 10 minutes. But if it's misery, goddamn, the hours can fly by. So, this is a, this is a, a self-reinforcing mechanism for a belief system that I have. That, oh, woe is me, this always has to happen. So, when I'm faced with that first, I just become okay with my not okayness, as you can see in this call. I'm, I'm, I'm completely okay. I mean, I'm not all sad, oh, woe is me, I'm being very lighthearted about explaining all this. So I'm completely okay with my not okayness. Yep, I'm not okay, and it's, it's fucking good, I'm owning that. I'm okay with my not okayness, awesome. So that's step one. And I'm focusing more and more on, like, you know, the idea of having my imagination completely defied, that more and more I'm going to see reflections in my reality that are opposite to the belief system, to where... More and more, Katarina is more successfully, you know, gaining ground and not falling back. And that I don't have to micromanage it, I don't have to bombard her with opinions and advice, nothing. That it, it, she's going to take care of it on her own, somehow, one way, <clears throat> some way, somehow. And I'm just looking forward to seeing it when it happens and I'm being patient. And I have these other permission slips in my reality as well, having nothing to do with Katarina that I've been using the same approach, and I've been getting a lot of results. And when I get these results, they're, they're not falling back into the way things used to be. They're continuing forward into better and better things. So I'm using that as a person so that I can look at that and go, huh, well, I see that that's been happening over there. I see that that's real. Logical mind cannot deny that that's real and that that's happening, and I see it, and it's continuing to happen, and it's not stopping, and it's moving forward. Therefore, if it's happening with all that other stuff, it can happen with Katarina, it could happen with, with, with anybody else. So I now have a permission slip to build up the neural network in my brain for that belief system that better things can happen. And the more I build that up, the more the other one deconstructs, the more the physical reality shifts. And anybody who's done any research in, in quantum physics, long story short, you already know that physical reality is holographic illusion. Atom, illusion. Atoms are made of energy. Energy isn't physical. So how does non-physical come together to make physical solid objects? The answer is that it doesn't and it can't. So it's all, you know, thoughts, emotions, the chair you're sitting in. Everything in the universe is really one thing at one point. Space and time are one thing existing at one point. Science will even tell you that every electron in the universe, in the universe, in all, in all the time space, is actually just one electron moving at infinite speed. So it can be everywhere at once. That means it can be every particle, every possibility, every probability. And that electron is referred to as superposition. So this is just quantum physics. People can watch the documentary, What the Bleak Do We Know? Um, the, the quantum edition of that, the extended edition of that, you can find uh, the playlist for that on my profile. Um, Paradigm Shift Talks for you. So yeah, it's... <laughs> I mean, there's all sorts of evidence with science, quantum physics, metaphysics. Examples in people's lives where they've been using this, but, you know, people got a belief system that, nope, none of that's possible, only misery is possible. It really doesn't matter what science has proven or not, because anybody can look at what science has proven and still look at it and go, nah, that's bullshit, that's, nah, they didn't really do that. That's not possible, because I fucking say so. I don't care about their lab experiments and that they quantified the experiment 10,000 times. I don't care about any of that. My ego says it's bullshit, so it's bullshit. And it happens with science all the time. Marshall Masters likes to say, modern science is a pursuit of funding for ego. So there's so much information that's suppressed and repressed. And even though some of it is like what falls into the category of conspiracy, to where you have some people that see that it's real, and it's a threat to their industry, so they suppress information, destroy evidence, kill people, whatever. But that's actually the minority of what happens. The majority of the suppression is just people shooting themselves in the foot with their own ego. Being like Luke Skywalker going, No, that's not true! That's impossible! Search your feelings, Luke. You know quantum physics is true. No! So, you know, that's mostly what it is in the scientific community. The vast minority of it is government corporate conspiracy. I mean, that stuff, it's there, it happens. That's the minority. The majority of it is scientists with huge fucking egos to think they know it, or intellectuals, the people who follow the science community, that are just looking at that going, no, no, no. And that's why we call the absolute most truthful science 
fringe science, too. Look at them kooky quantum physicists, the wacky fuckers. What are they doing over there with their pseudoscience? Well, if it's pseudoscience, how can they keep being able to quantify their experiments? No, no, they're not. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even going to look at that, because that's, that's all bullshit. I already know it's bullshit. I don't have to look at that at all. Fuck you. Get away. Stop insulting my intelligence. And that's the way people react to it. Sci a lot of science is even saying that the phenomenon, refer we refer to psychicness or energetic abilities or whatever, is just zero-point field phenomenon in conjunction with biology, that interface, and that we're just viewing it the same way as a caveman would look at a laptop. Oh, magic box from the gods. So when you're faced with that sort of dogma, you got one or two ways you can look at it. You can call it bullshit, say it's fantasy, and claim it, it can't exist, it doesn't exist. Or you can blindly worship it and go, Woo, it's magical! But never do we really hit a point of objectivity to where we go, you know, maybe that's actually just a piece of technology, or maybe that's just a fundamental part of the universe. It's natural. It's unexplored science. But instead we sit here saying, nope, the Earth is flat. Fuck you, I don't want to hear otherwise. So that's, I think I've made all the points that I want to make on this. Do you have anything to add? No, not, not really. Uh -huh. Are you sure? Because you've been dealing with some people lately that have been messing with, um, like, telekinetics and all kinds of crazy shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So maybe yeah. you want to add some of, some of that into this. And uh, make, not, at this time. not at this time. <laughs> yeah, and I think you're probably at, at your limit here. You're about, uh, about an hour's worth of time on here. That's okay, I can use the tempo speed up feature and bring that down to about 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, just speed. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. speed your tempo up, huh? What do you think I do? I mean, all the stuff that you see that I upload that's like 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Originally, that shit was like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. I just speed up the tempo. Just talk quicker, huh? <laughs> But, but but in that talking quicker, it just sounds like I'm going on an endless rant, and yeah. people just kind of figure, well, I guess he did that in pieces and spliced them together in an editor. Most people don't actually know that it's possible to speed up a tempo without making it sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Well, yeah, you, could, you know, you can double the, temp the tempo without really uh, speeding it up a whole lot. Well, no, I mean, there's a difference between tempo, speed, and pitch. Mm -hmm. And if you look in Audacity, mm -hmm. there's some, something called tempo, and it doesn't change the speed or pitch. It only changes the tempo. Mm -hmm. If you change speed and pitch, that's when you start sounding like... <laughs> but if you just change the tempo, then you're eliminating the space between um, the, the, the sound waves. Yeah, you're, you're just cutting out, out the, the, the silent portions. Mm-hmm. Because with change of tempo, it's about eliminating silences. It's not about... Actually increasing the speed of the audio that's been recorded. <laughs> because even within the, the waveform itself, what we would consider to be, you know, audible audio, there's micro spaces of, of silence, even fractions and fractions of, of a single word. There's these little micro spaces of silence because, you know, everything resonates out in a wave. So there's spaces that you that are happening so quickly that you can't even hear them. But a computer can find them. And a computer can work with them. So I guess you have to disconnect the call and reconnect the call in order to... Uh... Yes. All right. Well, uh, I'll send it to you. Then, of then course, course, immediately, immediately after, after this, this uh, Skype, Skype call... call. Um, I, went I went to go, to go help my dad, dad with what he needed help with, with and... and the universe gave me ample opportunity to use the knowledge that was just discussed. There was a little bit of drama. I overcame it easily, effortlessly. Things came to a quick peace, and then something synchronistically interesting happened. I'll spare you the details, but long story short, I was able to make a quick 15 bucks. And right in the middle, of making, of making my, my quick, quick 15, 15 bucks. bucks. Katarina calls. And she's, she's all excited and all happy. And right, right, right while I'm right in the middle of making, making my 15, 15 bucks, bucks, she's, she's telling, telling me 
about what she's excited and happy about. Want to know what she was excited and happy about? Because she just made fifteen hundred dollars. One, five, zero, zero. Remember what I was talking about, about the belief system? You have a core belief system that you can't seem to get beyond, so you be okay with your okayness, and then say, no, I really look forward to the universe showing me how wrong I am and defying my belief system and doing it in ways I couldn't possibly imagine for, and hindsight's going to look back and go, wow, wasn't that fucking cool? Well, here we are. That's exactly what just happened, and wow, wasn't that fucking cool? Well, I was making 1515 She made fifteen hundred one five zero zero dollars At the same time, the same base numbers, 1-5. She just had a couple more zeros than I did. <laughs> and it was all in alignment with everything you just heard in this video so far. So, you know, <laughs> not looking so airy-fairy anymore, is it? But I'll let I'll Katarina, Katarina ex explain, explain that in her own words. words. <laughs> just from just being crazy on the camera? Just from being crazy on the camera. And that's kind of clicking for me right now. Like That's why people actually what? want to view things. <laughs> it's because well, it's so ridiculous, right? It is. It is. We've got to do the crazy. It's all right to be just a little bit crazy. Being creative is being a little bit crazy in just the right vibration. With that in mind, you should understand God's completely insane. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. So today I made more than some people make in an entire month online. I did it all online. I was sitting there cleaning my room while I was doing it. I was doing nothing with my business. I hadn't done anything to my business all day. I was sitting there dancing, you know, singing along to Lindsey Sterling and just listening to the violin music. It was filling my being. I was just listening. And oh my god, $1,500 was just deposited into my bank account. Do you realize this kind of potential, my friends? Do you realize like what you can do with this? I just got in all, eight, all in today with my business. That means that I upgraded completely to all the products that there are to offer in my business. And do you know what that did for me? That signaled the universe that I'm ready. That I am freaking ready to make this happen. And what was I rewarded with? Um, some money, like, just deposited into my bank account. I'd already made money, like, in the business before. But when I just chose to make that massive action and decision with my financial, like, monetary money, I was rewarded ten times what I had already been making for the less effort do you realize like how cool that is? I made more than some people make an entire month in a freaking day. One day. I wasn't even doing anything online. It's not like I was sitting there slaving away on the computer just doing absolutely everything to make a puny commission. I was enjoying myself. I was cleaning my room of all things. <laughs> oh, I just, I'm just trying to tell you all how real this is. How real it is when you position yourself to make this kind of money. Magic happens, my friends. Magic. So if you really want to know more about me and this business that I'm talking so highly of, click the link below. I will be in touch with you via email and we can just get started and just get going because this is your life. And you deserve to live it to the fullest. You deserve to be yourself to the fullest. You deserve to have everything that you desire. Everything. And it's so much easier to do that when you have an income coming in passively. 
to get in touch with me and I will help you. Alright, talk to you later. Bye.